Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creative Tutorial. Today we're going to go over one of the per uh, assistant tool options in Krita as part of our assistant tool series. This one I've gone over before because it's a little newer to Krita, but we're going to go ahead and start with that and just kind of complete the series of how all these different options work. So once you have the assistant tool selected, make sure to go to your tool options and click on two point perspective. It's at the top of the list here, so if it's not selected by default, just click on the add drop down menu and click two point perspective. When you click on your canvas, whether your mouse, tablet, pen, whatever, you get two starburst icons. I'm just calling them starburst icons because it's kind of what they look like to me, just like a starburst. And you get the line in between them. So the line in between them is going to be your horizon line and the second point of the starburst is going to determine where your second point of perspective is going to be. And these are going to determine your vanishing points. So if you want this to be perfectly straight, hit the shift button for the horizontal one or horizontal um, horizon line or vertical. If you don't hit shift while you're moving this around, it's just going to be you know, pretty loose, whatever you want it to be. So if you want it to be a little bit more dramatic, you can just click on an angle. So these are your two vanishing points here, the left and the right side. And here in the middle, we can determine which one's going to be more drastic. So let's say I want like this side here on the left to be where I'm looking straight down. You can see that this line here, right here, kind of becomes more straight. That's like looking straight down at it that's the main vanishing point whereas on the right hand side it's really dramatic it's just very strong and angled just to, for demonstration purposes we're going to keep it simple and we're going to put this third point here in the middle and just real quick that circle here with the crosshair in it that's just showing you where your mouse cursor is in between these two points so even though i'm making like circles here by just hovering my mouse over this point here in the middle on the bottom. It's not actually doing anything, it's just when I move my mouse between these two points, that's where that uh, angle is going to be. So we're going to click, and now we have way more options that appear for our two-point perspective. Alright, so now you can see we have some extra points that show up. Before we go over these control points, I'm going to click on this, and you can go ahead and start moving this around. So to, if you want to make adjustments to your grid here, you can start doing that right away. Okay, so now that we've gone over how to move this vanishing point here, we want to talk about these extra controls. So real quick, this is going to move the, the rotation of the line, this right here, at either side. Okay. And this is actually going to move the vanishing point completely. So as you can see, the top one is moving that point along the bottom one in a very perfect diagonal. So if I need to move this in a specific manner, like let's say I do like the horizon line, oops, can't undo that. I do like the horizon line where it is, but I want to be a little, move it a little bit more down. I can do that to make it a little more dramatic without like having to manually move it. It's at a perfectly straight angle. So now if I click that second dot that was showing there, so if I undo, it's this dot here. Now I can control this line, and let's say I want to move that vanishing point along here. So we're going to actually move this along there by using that first controller on the top. And now that point is moving along that angle. So really this is just giving you a little bit more control over where you want this angle to be. And just as you know, or as you can see, I'm moving these points down so I can access them a little better. They don't need to be off the canvas or anything, and thankfully their length isn't going to affect the grid much, it's just if you move it. So if I just carefully make this longer, if I have a lot of stuff going on in my drawing, I can do that to make it easier to go back and edit. Or if it's too long, I can just carefully go back and shrink it down. So now that I've got a little bit more of a different look from my perspective, I can take this button here, this icon, and we saw this earlier where we were changing uh, which vanishing point was going to be more dr uh, dramatic, or the main focal, I guess, between the two. So I can always go back and edit that as well. 
So if I want it to be back here towards the left, or if I want it to be back here towards the right, I can do that. And now I'm gonna act, I'm actually gonna move this back up here so I can show you a couple other things that come with this particular assistant tool. All right, that's good enough. All right, so we're done. This is perfect. This is what we want. In our tool options, we can see we have two options that weren't there before, which is enable vertical ruler and density. If we need this to be a little bit more dense, like let's say we need more um, some more grid lines to reference. We can increase that density or decrease it. So here we're going to squish it and make it more dense. And here we're going to kind of make it loose and wild and crazy. <laughs> so you can see how many lines we now have to reference, but it kind of gives you a feeling of more space too. So we're going to go to our brush now. So while we have the brush activated, I'm going to actually zoom in so you can see this. As you zoom in, you can see the lines you have to reference, which is a lot. But maybe you're doing some really like really intricate um, detail for either a city, some sort of isometric thing, something that requires a lot of detail. You could be doing um, hard surface sketching for spaceships or robots or something, and maybe you need that. So in that case, this would be perfect to have a lower density and have more grid lines to mess with. And then as we zoom out, um, you can see that these lines are also all over the canvas and extend outward. Um, this is really helpful that way you can kind of have an idea of how, how far these are going to go. Because if you need to enlarge your canvas for whatever reason, at least your guides are going to still be there. And we can also see we have this really strange crosshair, looks like a, an X here with a vertical line, following my mouse cursor. I'm going to go look back and lower the density on this so we can see that a little better. So we're just going to click on a point to make sure we activate this. I'm going to just put that back up here. 1.57. Go back to our brush. So now that we see this a little bit better, we have uh, two perpendicular, I guess perpendicular is the right word, two, two lines crossing each other with a vertical. We can start drawing, but as you can see this does nothing. We need, to, we need to make sure it snaps to the assistance for the brush tool. So right now, we're going to ignore these options for the time being. And we're going to start making some lines here. I'm just going vertical and making a diagonal line on each side. So now we have some very perfectly straight lines that are perfectly within perspective. These make absolutely nothing right now, but they are going to do their job. As you can see, I don't have many lines here to reference. By lowering the density, we'll get more. And that's if you, like I said, if you have more intricate work. Right now, I don't need that, so we're just going to leave it as is. And we're just going to make some lines here to kind of look at this perspective. All right, so let's say I've got all this done. This is maybe a sidewalk or something. I want to see how this looks without this grid in the way. I'm going to go back to our assistant tool and kind of turn that off and go back to the brush tool. We still have this line here, which is our horizon line showing. And that's perfectly fine. It's faded, it's not very visible, but none of the other lines are showing. And even though we have the snap to assistance on, because we turned that visibility off, we can go and sketch like normal. So maybe I can make a note here that's saying uh, block A and then block B, so, so on and so forth. And I can make those notes and go back to our perspective grid and turn that visibility on again. And we can see where we're, we're uh, making this stuff now. So we're gonna make our vertical lines, whoops. Make one there, make one there. We'll just say these are like buildings. Okay, so we want to go ahead and start erasing some stuff too. So my eraser is kind of all over the place. It's not um, perfect. If it was, I wouldn't be able to go crazy with the eraser. You can snap to eraser. There we go. And now I can't uh, 
scribble horizontally after I've made that first horizontal mark. And you've already got some really interesting buildings being made or block, whatever you want to call them. Now we have snap to single line. If I turn this off, you can see I'm getting some crazy. For, I don't know what you would call this, to be honest, but it's just, it looks really crazy. You can see I have diagonal lines uh, showing here. I have uh, vert perfectly vertical lines. This is kind of crazy looking. I'm actually going to turn that layer off and do a new layer so you can see that a little better with a green. I'm just going to drag my pen over here. I'm, I'm just dragging this around the canvas. I'm not doing anything special. So that looks really, really neat. Kind of like that retro Tron type look. So if this is interesting and you're like, okay, I want to play that a little bit more, but it's too perfect. We can turn that magnetism down and we can start making strokes and it has almost an imperfect stroke look to it. Some of these points are snapping as you can see. So if we turn that magnetism back on, to, well, let's say about around 700, and we start dragging our mouse along the canvas, you can see some really interesting look that's happening here. It's very, very interesting. Now if we snap to single line, turn that layer off on another one, we'll use this color. It's snapping it's still snapping within the direction of the first stroke I made so this is at an angle so even if I'm going straight up and down which you can't really see but I'm trying to go straight up and down it's not really going straight up and down at all so if I lower that magnetism I can kind of do it a little better if I put that perfectly back up to a thousand it's just staying within that one stroke I just made with a straight up and down vertical line. If I turn the snap off to single, I can do that, but then it gets, I don't know what you would call this really. It gets a little crazy. Honestly, I think everyone should play with this because it, it just, it's fun. It's for a fractal. I think it looks like a fractal image. A future editing we see here. I forgot to go over one feature, which is the enable vertical ruler. So I'm going to show you what that does really quick. Alright, so first when you go to your brush tool and you enable snap to assistance, and you make these lines here, these straight up and down lines. These are your vertical lines. You can actually turn that off. So if you go back to your assistant and click on it and turn this off, you will only be able to do horizontal lines. You won't be able to do the ones that are vertical. It's very simple very easy to turn on and off, but that's what that is. And that's it for the two-point perspective. So we can use that to make our lovely buildings here, um, sketch out some streets um, or some vehicles or some weird robot things, and we can always fine-tune it later. So if you have any questions about the two-point perspective or how you could use it, or maybe I went over something or didn't go over something that you would have liked me to, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to make another video about it or just answer your question in the comments below very as quickly as I can. Make sure to like this video and then subscribe so you don't miss out the next couple videos that are going to be coming out about the assistant tools. I will see you in the next video.